I'm going to read to you from Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, thank you, lady, your, ladies. Uh, your ministry has been absolutely beautiful. <laughs> you guys, do stop doing this to me. I can tell you that. I saw David Gilmore yesterday, and uh, being the caring husband that he is, he suggested I might want to keep it short today, because Kathy had made herself and her family a really nice Mother's Day meal. <laughs> he thought I'd uh, keep it short, and I agree with him, because I feel the same way, and I feel like wives like Dave and Kathy, or Marla, uh, Marla and Kathy, uh, having husbands like they do, that care so much that the last thing we would want them to do is have to make a second meal on Mother's Day for themselves. So <laughs> that's how much we care about them. You know, really, we do care about them and love them. And I know that we would be totally and completely lost without our wives and our mothers and all the other mothers that we have in our lives. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a child ready to be born. So one day he asked God, they tell me, you are sending me to earth tomorrow, but how am I going to live there being so small and helpless? God replied, among the many angels, I chose one for you. She will be waiting for you, and you will... and." waiting for you, and we'll take care of you. But tell me, here in heaven, I don't have to do anything else but sing and smile. That's enough for me to be happy. Your angel will sing for you, and will smile for you every day, and you will feel your angel's love and be happy. And how am I going to be able to understand when people talk to me if I don't know the language that men talk? Your angel will tell you the most beautiful and sweet words you will ever hear. And with much patience and care, your angel will teach you how to speak. What am I going to do when I want to talk to you? Your angel will place your hands together and will teach you to pray. I've heard that on earth there are bad men who will protect me. Your angel will defend you even if it means risking its own life. But I will always be sad because I, I will not see you anymore. Your angel will always talk to you about me and will teach you the way for you to come back to me, even though I will always be next to you. At that moment, there was much peace in heaven, but voices from earth could already be heard. And the child in a hurry asked softly, Oh God, if I'm about to leave now, please tell me my angel's name. Your angel's name is of no importance, but you will call your mom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you will call your angel mommy. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> A mother's love provides comfort and security and encouragement to her children. The protective instinct that a mom that moms have and we have as parents is so strong and fierce that we cannot imagine anyone who could possibly love their children more. And yet there is. We, we can stay up all night with a child a, a night or two, but only God never sleeps. Moms manage many scraped knees uh, through the years, but only God can make those little knees heal. They have carefully listened to the concerns of teenagers that only God can see and understand everything in a teen's mind and heart. 
Isaiah 66, 13. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. <clears throat> we have the privilege of loving our children. I know, although perfectly, for a limited number of years, but God, who designed them in you and me, loves us perfectly. His love knows no limits. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgression, and he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. There was, has never been a more amazing act of love. Our sins uh, brought him death, but his wounds bring us healing. When we come face to face with our need for healing, God's limitless love, he wants him, we want him in a way that an injured child wants his mother. When we place our faith in Jesus, we stand in a position of incredible privilege. We become the children of God. Galatians 3.26. For ye are the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> We've all had uh, many mothers. Clearly, motherhood is, is more than just uh, physically giving birth. Uh, in my case, my mom was, uh, she was quirky. You know her. <laughs> she was uh, very loving, very artistic, and uh, very talented in many ways, and very opinionated. And uh, and I love her, uh, love her very much. <laughs> they say that weird weird moms build character. We all knew that she was a little different, but uh, that's what we love about her. Our other moms, and you and I have had possibly over the years were maybe Sunday school teachers that taught us many things. Maybe in a, maybe it was a, your mother-in-law that loves you as much as your, your mom did, or a lady that cared for you and encouraged you in some way. In my case, uh, another one of my moms was Maxine Goldsmith, which I told you that before, I think, but... Uh, when I first started coming to church, she would uh, always ask me to go to league activities. I would never go, but she would not give up, and uh, she would continue to ask me. And it, I, she really made me feel like she cared about me and uh, a stubborn kid, and and I was uh, grateful for that. And then throughout the years, that she was always very kind and concerned about me, and I appreciated that. Mothers are everywhere if we only have eyes to see them. Motherhood is woven into the very fabric of creation, and God says that all creation tells about his glory. Tyler Holly said, We as human beings submit to the loving authority of Jesus Christ and eternal life is planted into our hearts. Because Eve did not submit to God in the garden, all the world fell into chaos. Mary did submit to God, and the whole world was saved through the seed planted in her. All mothers tell this gospel story. Also, motherhood reflects the nurturing nature of God. When a woman bears a child, she nurses him and cares for him, and his source of life outside, as his source outside the womb, a source of life outside the womb. When a person is born from above, God does, God does not leave that Christian to themselves. He cares, cares for them and nurtures them as a mother. And does this through his church. We are born into her through our baptism. She uh, nurses us on the milk of God's word and feeds us on the body and blood of Christ. The mothers of Proverbs 31 provides food, makes clothes, and deals with finances. So in Proverbs 31, 10 through 31, <clears throat> who can find a virtuous mother? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like a mer the merchant ship that brings her food from afar. 
She rises also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. She considereth a field and buy it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins and strengthened the, and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands on the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is, is not all, all afraid of the snow for her household, for her household is clothed in, in scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when, she sitteth, when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is a law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but none excelleth them all. Excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her, praise her in the gates. So in other words, the whole house would fall apart basically without a mother. We'd be naked and hungry and afraid. So mother is a visual picture of God's tangible care for us through the church. Tyler also said, moms have faith, not necessarily children. Some women may never nurture physical offspring, but pour themselves into the lives of the church. Church is young. Uh, she that walks around with a a walk, rambunctious band of kids now in, in tow, a Mary Poppins of Christendom. In many such women I have seen the mother of Proverbs 31, who never let the fellowship, uh, fellow Christian go hungry, works hard to close the needy, and takes care to make uh, sure the life of the church runs smoothly. So even a woman without biological offspring can have children, Christian children who rise up and call her blessed. The church is filled with sons like us uh, who need the mothering of many women. Marla's grandma, uh, Clara Hostetler, I do believe that she would give the clothes off of her back uh, if she thought somebody needed it uh, more than she did. <clears throat> this is an unknown author. I have had many opportunities to have a perfect unobstructed view of the communion bread as it was placed on the table. I watched as the loaf was being prepared for the sacrament, and I noticed how beautiful the loaf is and untouched in an untouched state. It is perfectly smooth and slightly mounted on top. Then it is broken first into a few large pieces, then broken into some more and put into different plates. Then it is passed around through the congregation. It will never be brought back together into one loaf or become itself again. In fact, it becomes no longer recognizable as a loaf. It has been broken down into very small pieces and is, then is consumed. Now it, is, it no longer exists. It has become invisible and is now part of each person that has consumed it. I was tempted to be a little sad seeing the beautiful formed intact loaf broken up. I was, it was so beautiful. But what good have it done if it would stay intact? What would have eventually happened to it? In time, it would have just become moldy and unfit for eating. As the manna from heaven fell from heaven, uh, did when the Israelites didn't obey and left it till the next day. Or it could have just dried out, became, becoming stale and hard, again, useless. Intact, maybe beautiful, but useless. Its purpose was to be broken, passed out, and consumed. 
rather than sad, it was fulfilling its purpose for why it was made. Instead of a single beautiful loaf, it has been broken and multiplied into many pieces. A single loaf at first, but then made available to a large number of people. We see the principle in the, the parable of Jesus. In John 12, 24 through 36, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall up on the ground and die, it, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto the life eternal. If any man serve, serve me, let him follow me. For I, for I am there, shall, it, I'm sorry, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. <clears throat> Instead of existing for itself, it became food for many people. He gave up his existence to be used for, for even grander purposes and uh, representing Christ's body for the church. This, of course, was the very reason it came into existence. The baker made it for the purpose of becoming communion bread. What about us? What did we do to gain existence? Your very existence was given by your by given you by God. You are to live for yourself. You are to live for yourself. Keep yourself intact and beautiful. You made the, uh, for the purpose of serving. You were made for the purpose of serving God, feeding his sheep, caring for his lambs. Isn't that kind of what a mother does? That they give themselves until there isn't anything recognizable about themselves. John 21, 15 through 17. So they had, <clears throat> so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. He saith unto him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He hath, saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said this the third time, Lovest thou me? And when he had said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Jesus could have stayed in heaven intact. <clears throat> it would have done us no good. He could have refu refu refused the cross and saved his skin, and it would have done us no good. He could have come down from the cross as a wicked thief taunted him to do so, but he didn't. He poured himself out to do the, God's will, uh, to do what, what God's will was for him, to do and let himself be sacrificed for us. He has given his body to be used of God, and so are you. Death to itself. Come after me, take up the cross daily, and follow me, meaning die to yourself daily. This is the way of the cross of Christ, of living out the purpose of your life. John says that unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it, mean, it remains intact, a single seed, useless alone. Otherwise, its purpose it produces. Otherwise, it produces many seeds. This is the purpose of our life. Our body, like a candle, is to be burned up to give light. Becoming a mother, you know that uh, that life will never be the same. When you're giving up uh, to be used, how glorious for the body of those that are used uh, for the life of another. <clears throat> We as parents uh, yield ourselves to God's plan, even though it is unknown to us. Take difficulties and challenges from his hand and seek the grace also from his hand to deal with them. We will find the grace, that grace coming to us from beyond us, and we, we turn to him. That is being a, a Christian parent. I am not my own. It is not myself, my time, my body, or my agenda. We grow up in a sense when we have, we have children, children live for self and need to be taken care of. 
when we have children, we have to let go of self and no longer seek to, to be taken care of, but to care for others. We let go of things of self and see the benefiting of others. <clears throat> it was a busy morning in Costa Mesa, California. When then, with 10 children and one on the way, <laughs> uh, on the way, every day was a bit hectic. On this particular day, however, I was troubled, having trouble uh, doing even routine chores because of one little boy. Lynn, who was three at the time, was uh, on my heels. No matter where I went, where, wherever I stopped uh, to do something and turn back around, I would trip over him several times. I impatiently suggested fun activities to keep him occupied. Wouldn't you like to play outside on the swing set? I asked him, but he simply smiled and in some innocent smile and said, oh, that's all right, Mommy, I'd rather be here with you. Then he continued to bounce happily along behind me. After stepping on his toes for the fifth time, I began to lose my patience and insisted that he go outside and play with the other children. When I asked him why he was acting this way, he looked at me with those sweet green eyes and said, well, Mommy, in primary, my teacher told me to walk in Jesus' footstep, but I can't see him, so I'll walk in yours. I gathered Lynn in my arms and, and held him close. Tears of love and humility spilled over uh, from the prayer that grew in my heart. A prayer of thanks for a simple yet beautiful perspective of a three-year-old. This experience has served as a reminder to me of a vital role of a mother. While it's sobering to realize that I am a crucial link between my children and the Savior, I need to remember that since a mother is a co-partner with God, I am in a position to receive guidance from one who truly cares and wants us all to walk in heavenly footsteps. Thank you. <clears throat>